Okay, let's talk about the MEGA Elementary Education Multi-Content Assessment. So if you're watching this video, I assume you are preparing for this exam. Um, uh, that or you're very bored and you said, hey, I just want to know more about the MEGA Elementary Education Multi-Content <laughs> Assessment, right? So again, probably 99.9% .9 of you out there are studying uh, for this particular exam, which is a certification exam in the great state of Missouri to teach at the elementary education uh, level. So um, a part of almost all uh, teacher certification exams doesn't make a difference what state you're in. There will be a math component to it and of course on this particular assessment there is a math component to it and you know if you really take a look at it uh, sometimes if you wouldn't know any better you would just think that oh it's an elementary education uh, assessment so you know all I need to know is about prime numbers and divisibility rules and fractions etc but you'd be quite surprised uh, they really do want you to know much more you know algebra geometry etc so I think you know if you haven't already taken a look at uh, what's specifically on the assessment you really should do that it's pretty easy to do just go ahead and google it and you can get to this uh, test specifications um, from the state but a little bit about myself my name is John I'm the founder of Tab Class Math middle school and high school math teacher and even top beyond that but I've done a lot in uh, online learning for many many years and uh, I actually offer a test prep course very comprehensive for the uh, MEGA elementary education multi-content assessment I'm gonna leave the link uh, to that course in the description of this video if that's something you want to check out but this video here is kind of a little pop quiz if you will okay so again you know you're gonna have to be pretty uh, strong if you will in, you know high school level mathematics algebra geometry and certainly uh, elementary uh, level mathematics concepts place value fractions uh, all that kind of good stuff but here's a quick little pop quiz for you if you just want to gauge where you're at now even if you get this right there's no by no means this is an indicator that you know um, that oh you're you're all set for this exam but if you don't get this right then that is an indicator that you know you really do have some work to do on your your algebra okay so I would classify this as a pretty easy algebra problem so I'm gonna obviously solve the problem here I just do the problem let's say but I like you to go ahead and simplify okay tell me what the results of doing this is I don't want to tell you too much because I want you to kind of figure it out and then I'm gonna actually do it okay so maybe you pause the video and you have your answer ready hopefully most of you out there were able to do this in like I don't know 45 seconds or, or whatnot but what we're doing here is we're taking this binomial and we're squaring that so what this means is we're taking 2x minus 3 and we're going to multiply it by 2x minus 3 okay anytime we square anything we're just multiplying it by itself right so if I have x squared that means x times x if I have 3 squared that means that's 3 times 3 so Hopefully this is all pretty easy uh, for you. But now if you just wrote this, uh, that's not good enough. Okay, so if you did write that, this as your answer, what I'd like you to do is to go ahead and multiply these two binomials together. Now I can continue to really, I can sit here and teach for, you know, uh, a long, long time on binomials, polynomials, how to multiply. I mean, it's a huge topic, right? Uh, but that's not the purpose of this video. You really need to kind of have a good study plan uh, to do well on on the elementary education multi-content assessment okay so whether you use a course like mine or, or some other you know uh, course you don't want to go into the exam you know not really knowing your stuff okay trust me uh, as somebody who's taken certification exams they're not easy right they're professional exams and they're not they shouldn't be easy because they you know this is a profession that you're going into so you know don't underestimate the amount of study you know you have to do to to, to be you know, um, you know really confident on on these assessments alright back to the problem okay so here we're gonna multiply these two uh, binomials together and probably the easiest way to do it is to use something called FOIL or the FOIL method now I don't know if that rings a bell for some of you hopefully out some of you are thinking, yeah I kinda remember that from high school or college or whatnot but the FOIL method stands for first outer inner last okay 
So what we're going to do, actually let me just do it this way, we're going to multiply this by first multiplying the first terms of these binomials. So here we go, right? So these are the first ones, all right? So we're going to multiply these together. So this is the first. So 2x times 2x is going to be 4x squared. Now again, I can get into all of this and why that's the case, but hopefully you were like, okay, yes, I know that's 4x squared. If you if you're struggling with why exactly that is, then of course, you know, that's a good indicator. You got a, you got a lot of review to do. All right, so we did the first. Now we're going to do the outers, okay? So the outers are going to be these guys right here. Okay, these are the outers. Okay, so the first outers is going to be 2x, and now it's this 3 here. But this uh, confuses a lot of students. This sign, or this negative right here, is also part of this problem. So you can kind of think of this as plus negative 3. So 2x times a negative 3 is going to be a negative 6x. Okay, negative 6x. So that's my outers. Now I'm going to do my inners. Now let me just do it this way. My inners right here. Okay, I'm going to highlight this here for you. So we're going to use that negative 3 and we have this 2x again. So this negative 3 times that 2x is going to be another negative 6x. And then of course, what do you think the L stands for? Well, the L stands for last. So that's going to be this negative 3 and that negative 3. That's the last one in, in both. So negative 3 times negative 3 is going to be a positive 9. Let's just write that down right here. So now let's go ahead and simplify. i got 4x squared. Okay, I'll write that here. Now I have like terms, okay? I have negative 6x and negative 6x, so I can write that as a negative 12x, and then I have my remaining plus 9, or my last constant there. And there you go. Okay, so when I squared this binomial, I ended up with a trinomial. Now, this is pretty much basic algebra. This is These are skills that you definitely, you know, will need to know, um, you know, for this particular uh, level. Now, just because, you know, at the elementary level, you may not be teaching this, you know, you don't, you know, I, I can't really, I had never taught elementary uh, math, but I certainly taught middle school math and beyond. And I could tell you, you know, from sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, and eighth grade, as you well know, you could be doing, uh, a lot of teachers are teaching algebra one or, or honors geometry. So, you know, these are like high school level courses. So things can get kind of like, you can have a fifth grade student for sure, gifted and talented, doing, you know, algebra, no problem. I've seen it many times uh, before. So, you know, uh, you don't know what level you're going to be at. You might be able to be teaching at the third grade level, you know, about prime numbers and fractions and all that kind of good stuff. But you can certainly, you're definitely going to be getting into um, algebra, geometry concepts in the elementary level. You may not be doing this exactly for everyone, but nevertheless, you know, you still, uh, for this particular assessment, and I think in general, it's, you know, one is required, you know, this stuff for this assessment, but it too, it's just going to make you a better teacher. And you never know, you might transfer or not transfer, you might switch to become a middle school teacher and maybe you want to become a, you know, middle school math teacher. You just never know. Okay. But hopefully, this was a fun little practice uh, problem for you. Again, um, let me leave you with a couple little things here. Again, I have a full comprehensive uh, uh, test uh, prep course for this assessment. Okay, So if you want to check that out, I'm going to leave the link in uh, the description of this video. If you're new to my YouTube channel, I've been on YouTube for over a decade. I have hundreds and hundreds of math videos that definitely can help you prepare. So hopefully you'll consider subscribing. It's kind of a, a great way to see a lot more of my uh, uh, math tutorials. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up. And leave me some feedback. Are you, um, you know, making a career switch? Are you coming right from high school to college to, to teaching? Um, are you, you know, is this your second time, you know, taking this exam? Don't be... And don't be put out, by the way, if you've taken this exam or this assessment and, and, and you failed. I know, for example, I had to take the Praxis exam for the state that I taught in uh, to teach like high school level math, which had like calculus and stuff on there. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe the, the failure rate was like 50 or 60 percent. So a lot of people go into these exams and they have to take them again. It's not uncommon. You know, uh, you know being a teacher, 
uh, as you well know, is a, a is a profession. It's unfortunate that a lot of people in our society don't, you know, we don't have the respect. A lot of people do respect teachers, um, but I think a lot of folks, you know, out there, you know, I'm kind of going off on a tangent here, but I'll, let me just say this here real quick. A lot of people don't maybe respect teaching as much as they really should because they they don't they don't really have a true understanding of what goes into becoming a teacher and the amount of education and work and study just to be, get your certifications and license to teach let alone classroom management grading you know quizzes tests assessments parent teacher conferences it's a big deal you know uh, so with that being said listen we need great teachers and I, uh, I hope you you know you achieve uh, your goals which I'm sure you will but I guess my my two cents here is just don't give up okay it takes time to really learn this craft and uh, you know first things first first is that you gotta study and get through your your licensing um, you know testing if you will certification process but with that being said thank you for your time I wish you all the best and have a great day